After this discussion was recorded, Vodafone CEO Nick Reed did an about turn and said journalists had quoted him out of context. He wrote a letter to Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Telecom Minister Ravi Shankar Prasad on Wednesday the 13th of November saying his company remained committed to India. Reed's statement came after the government expressed its strong displeasure at his reported comments at a press conference in London on Tuesday. However, the reality on the ground has not changed, even as the Department of Telecommunications sent notices to companies like Airtel and Idea Vodafone asking them to pay their dues. The share prices of the two companies collapsed on Thursday. Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we are going to discuss the mess that we seem to be seeing emerging in the telecom sector as well. This, of course, is on the heels of a very bad quarter, which seems to have recorded very little growth, if not a negative growth. Parajay, looking at the industrial sector, the picture is not rosy. But when you talk of the infrastructure, things seem to be even worse. You are being very, very cautious. When you say things are not rosy, things are in a very, very bad shape. Exactly. But when you compare it to what we are talking about is the infrastructure sector, and infrastructure I've been mean really from the what is called conventional infra, from housing to roads to... Power, power steel, to, cement. Then you come to things like telecom and power sector. This, this is really uh, looking pretty dismal, and in this, Telecom currently is in a huge crisis with Vodafone CEO announcing that their net worth in India is zero and they have no intention of putting any more money into it and they're going to let it collapse if things continue like this and they don't seem to be willing to pay what the Supreme Court has levied as what is owed to the government in terms of what is the share of the uh, gross revenue, which is really the license fee and various other penalties besides for not paying this money. What is the picture of the telecom sector as a whole? Who are the players and who? what is the way that it is looking to go? go? Okay, you asked me a number of questions, so let me break it down into three or four parts. On Tuesday, the 12th of November, Nick Reed, the chief executive officer of Vodafone, worldwide. He, at a press conference, at a media conference in London, said that they're not going to invest anything more in India because they have nothing. They, they said we are in a bad shape. The value of our investments is zero or somewhere there. And let me read out two rather colorful quotes, which were sort of selectively quoted in the Indian media, but they're very, very colorful quotes. Now, Mr. Reid said, either they, I, I presume he means the government, he said either they should take their boots of the industry and allow it to better compete against Mukesh Ambani on 5G, meaning fifth generation spectrum, or Vodafone idea, that's the merge entity, is destined for a potentially chaotic final act with potential repercussions for India's international standing. Now, that's a very, very strong, and he names Mr. Mukesh Ambani. Now, another quote from Mr. Reid. Throughout, dot, 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 Indian officialdom welcomed Vodafone with all the warmth of a Himalayan mountaintop. It has been in court since the moment it arrived, that is, 2007, and used as soft targets by politicians and taxmen, the destruction of value has been complete. Now, I mean, he's talking then, you know, of the income tax dispute, the retrospective amendment to the Income Tax Act. But let's, I mean, what he said is that there's not been, the re regulation has not been supportive. He said unsupportive regulation. And what has come as a kind of a final blow, literally the last nail in the coffin or the last straw on the camel's back, if you like, was the 24th October. 
October 2019 judgment of the Supreme Court by a bench headed by Justice Arun Mishra, which sought to define what you could include in the license fee, the gross revenue, and from there you adjust the gross revenue, the adjusted gross revenue. And, and we can talk about it in greater detail. The short point is, just on the whole issue of revenue, the industry has to cough up an estimated 93,000 crores in 90 days. That's the end of January. Now, of this amount, the two biggest chunks is Airtel, Bharti Airtel, 42,000 crores, and Idea Vodafone, about 40,000 crores. By way of contrast, Reliance Geo's dues are about 13.35 crores. Yeah, but Paranjai, if we leave that part out, because Geo enters much later, this is really essentially a battle over what is the license fee. And license fees were originally in terms of revenue share, and therefore what is adjusted, adjusted gross revenue. And it's a battle which has continued in the courts for about 10, 15 years. 15 years, 15 years. at least 15 years. And that's also the reason why the accumulated loss is so high. Or yeah. what they began no, to I, mean, I mean, I mean, but I, I'm going yeah, to okay. they come to the other point issue that this still would not have been such a huge blow, except for the fact that after the entry of Jio, both Vodafone as well as Bharati has been forced to reduce prices, and essentially Jio has been charged by these two players as well as BSNL of actually introducing what's called in technical terms predatory pricing. Which predictably Jio denies, and we can talk no, about that as well. Predatory pricing would be that in a regulated market, if you say my voice is free and others have to pay or are charging a, from the customer revenue in terms of uh, prices for voice calls, of course there is an argument. I'm not going to say who's right or wrong. There's an argument, there's predatory pricing. And the basic issue is that the TRAI has always taken the issue of what's called, it calls forbearance. That means as long as there's good competition, I will not interfere in setting a price level. That is good for the consumer at the end price of the day. Price floor. No, you see, the argument has always been that a predatory pricing is not good for the consumer in the long run. So, question is, I want, I will not set a floor, but I will only set a ceiling. That was the whole idea of forbearance that and the, we do not let see. Me, let me interrupt you here. And, and, you know, start from where you left off and then go back a little bit. You see, in the Competition Commission of India, you can define a predator once that particular entity or conglomerate has a dominant share of the market. Now, until recently, Reliance Geo didn't have it. So now... Mm, actually, I'll say... Yeah. Uh, let, oh, let, uh, me, let me tell you, on Telecom, TRAI, I'm not talking of Competition Commission here, Telecom, it was also argued that when shall we talk about having a monopoly position? It's not right. just a dominant okay. position, okay. a monopoly position. So, so, okay. so therefore, that that is not as high as as apparently okay. the Competition Commission shows. And the issue of predatory pricing had let come me, up much earlier. Yeah. So, so let me go and look at, you know, in terms of looking at it narrowly and carefully, there is an issue of predatory pricing. Remember, Reliance Geo has now started charging for voice, which earlier it hadn't. There's also something called predatory behavior, which is different from predatory pricing. And as you rightly pointed out, this whole issue of flow, ceiling prices, what's good for the consumer, what's not. Now, let's go step by step. Now, the original disputed amount, as far as the license, I'm going back to the judgment and the licensing fee is concerned, was just, just 23,000 crores. This is why Airtel and Vodafone is saying, wave off the interest and the penalty and the interest on the penalty and the interest on the interest, all of which adds up from 23,000 crores to 93,000 crores. It's a huge amount. It, it goes up by, you know, more than four times. Now, let's take one more step back. You had 13 telecom companies who have served orders. Today, only three are left. I mean, I mean you have Reliance Geo. Plus BSNL. And of course, of course, in the public sector, you have BSNL, and that's another story. The rest of the 12 have either merged, or they've shut down, or they filed for bankruptcy, 
proceedings. So now what we are seeing today, remember, the industry is steeped in debt for 7,000 crores. Now you've seven sold, thousand? Uh, sorry, seven, seven lakh crores. I seven stand lakh crores. seven lakh crores. crores. At least. So <laughs> what we are seeing is not only a 100,000, roughly 92,000 yes. crores, 93,000 crores debt, which they're not able to pay or charges they're not able to pay, which is what Vodafone CEO is saying, which also Airtel may also say. But the bigger issue is that these telecom companies, including the companies which you have said have shut down, owe the banks about roughly 7 lakh crores. Absolutely correct. Now, you have to also understand two or three things that have been happening. The gross revenue that is being earned by the government, which peaked at about 2 lakh 37,000 crores in 2015 has been steadily coming down. Now, the government too is in a bind. Why? Because now the battle is out in the open, no holes barred. Because Reliance Geo is now saying, telling the government, don't bail out Idea Vodafone, don't bail out Bharti Airtel. Why? They, have, they are a commercial failure, they financially mismanage their businesses, and further, loss to the exchequer. Further, contempt of court. Now, interestingly, it must, you must note that for the first time, actually, in 14 years, Bharti Airtel declared a loss. And, and now we have a panel, a panel, and I don't envy those who are on the panel, the Cabinet Secretary Rajiv Goba, the Telecom Secretary Anshu Prakash, the Finance Secretary Rajiv Kumar, and the Law and Justice Secretary Anup Kumar Mendiratta. He's going to have a baptism by fire because he's the first judge who's actually been promoted to the position of Law Secretary. But anyway, all kinds of packages. Will, I mean, from, we are hearing a two-year moratorium on spectrum payments, two-twenty-year. Let's, let's sort of stop right now for the what is the possible solution the government can offer. Mm -hmm. At the moment, let's look at what the state of the telecom companies are. One is the telecom sector has seven lakh crore debt to the banks. It is being asked to pay 93,000 crores, out of which the biggest of them, two, Vodafone and Airtel, one says their net worth is zero, others have the other has declared loss. And can this company survive? Vodafone has said categorically no. No, no, Mr. Hasn't said, it. hasn't said it, but... Uh, Mr. Dick Reed said it in so many words, that if this happens, we are not going to infuse any other e that's more right. equity. We have introduced... No, no, he said it in so many words. I mean, he said it's destined for a potentially chaotic final act. Yeah, so I, I don't know then why you said it has not. <laughs> he has not. I'm saying, as far as I'm concerned, yes, he has said... he's virtually said it. That it will shut down. If that is so... And, and, and remember, Idea Vodafone has, even as we talk has about 30% market share. Yeah. It, it has about Apologize. 300 asked, million customers. Yes, the go question, on. That if they shut down, we are BSNL is in crisis without further equity. It is very difficult for it to sustain its operations. 70,000 people are leaving on VRS. It's going to be the bigger uh, soup in terms of extending itself at the moment. Airtel, as you said, has already announced a loss. So are we handing the entire telecom sector over, if this continues and Vodafone really exits from the market, are we handing over the whole telecom sector to Jio? And Jio has bank been basically bankrolled, let's put it bluntly. Mr. Bukesh Ambani's deep pockets earned from the oil revenue. Oil, petrochemical, a whole lot of other sectors. And it, is, it is not, re and in fact, the question is, what are the debts of Jio? Who holds it is a different question. And, and, and the reason is why we don't know is because Reliance Industries Limited, which is India's biggest privately owned uh, company, single corporate entity, widely diversified, as we say, from petrochemicals, textiles, to telecom, to retail, you name it. We don't know exactly how much money has come from where whether the profits from one sector have moved to the other. So we can't strictly compare it with the, the accounts of Airtel and with Idea Vodafone. That's one part of the story. The bigger question is, is this in the interest of the government? And is this in the interest the of, of the consumer? And is it in the interest 
of the country as a whole, naturally. Because if you have a situation where earlier you had 15 players, today you have three plus two in the public sector which are limping just about, then if you earlier from a situation of competition or intense competition, you had an oligopoly, do you want a monopoly or a duopoly? In my opinion, it's clear no. It should not happen because I think at the end of the day, it's bad for the consumer, it's bad for the country as a whole. But we'll have to wait and watch. Well, if it becomes a monopoly, wait and watch is a different act. But letting it become a monopoly, that's what you're watching now. That's so right. that is the time to intervene. If as government, as regulator, you have to intervene, it is now. Because once it becomes a monopoly, then the only watch you can do is to take it over. And I don't think this government is in a mood to take anything over, let alone, you know, tinker with Mr. Mukesh Ambani. So if Mr. Mukesh Ambani now has a monopoly of the airwaves, or virtual monopoly over the airwaves, and a virtual monopoly of all the data that's moving around, and a dominant share of the content that is moving around in the data through its media outlets. Yes, is, that's also true. It is also a media right. monopoly today. That's right. I mean, it is one of the biggest players, if not a biggest players in many languages, in what you hear, what you watch, what you get to read. All of it, in my opinion, portends a very, very dark future. It is dangerous for India's democracy as well as for India's capitalists shall we say, if one capitalist becomes so big in the process. It is not even an oligarchy. It's, no. it's, it's, a, it's a monopoly. And in, in my opinion, it doesn't matter whether you believe in socialism or communism or capitalism. It's bad. End of story. End of story. It's terrible. Thank you very much, Paranjaya, for being with us, explaining what's a rather difficult set of facts and also rather dismal statistics. This is all the time we have for watching News Click. Do keep watching us and visiting our website.